Welcome to Superintendent Radio Network. I'm Guy Cipriano. Well, it's a good time to chat snow mold, although as our guest will explain on this podcast, snow mold is something that should be on a superintendent's mind long before temperatures start dipping. Joining us for this disease discussion conversation is our friend and BSF Senior Technical Specialist, Kyle Miller, who's well-versed on every disease-related topic, including snow mold. Before we get going with Kyle, a quick message from the disease discussion sponsor, BSF. Insignia SC Intrinsic brand fungicide effectively controls snow mold on all turf types, providing plant health benefits and enhancing peace of mind throughout the season. Plus, this powerful solution offers simple mixing and handling, making it, making it easier than ever to protect your course from common stressors such as disease, drought, and extreme temperatures. Ask your BSF sales rep how you can preserve the beauty and playability of your turf with Insignia SC Intrinsic brand fungicide. Now on to our conversation with Kyle. Well, Kyle, thanks for joining us again. It's always great to speak with you. Let's get this out of the way. Before we go any further, describe the common types of snow mold a superintendent should be concerned about as winter approaches here. So, Guy, if you're good with colors, uh, it really helps with snow mold because the names of the different snow molds are, uh, line up with different colors. So, first, we've got pink snow mold. And pink snow mold is the one that can occur in a, in a lot of geographies, north to south. Um, and one of the, the uh, things about pink snow mold is you do not have to have snow cover in order to get pink snow mold, oddly enough. You can, but bottom line, too, is, is that the color of the snow mold does look pink in the spring of the year because you've got this uh, pink sporadokia that when you see sunlight on it, it, it shows up really pink. So that's one of the, probably the most common up and down um, north to south. And then we've got ones that do require a snow cover in order to uh, express themselves. And that would be gray snow mold. And once again, if you know your colors, you can identify it fairly easily. That one needs about 60 days of snow cover in order to uh, show symptoms. And then we've also got speckled snow mold, which has these black sclerotia in there. So uh, when you look at that in the spring of the year, you see this sort of this speckly look. And that uh, needs a little bit longer period of snow cover, up to about 90 days. Well, you stole my next question about whether uh, snow is required for snow mold to appear on turf. But when you talk about pink snow mold going south, how far south have you seen it or heard reports of it, Kyle? Well, what ends up happening is, as you do move south, we, we sort of change the name to Fusarium, uh, even though it's the same basic uh, uh, fungus that's attacking the turf grass. But, you know, we, we can get it down to Florida, believe it or not. It's pretty widespread up and down the East Coast in particular. Yeah, it's the one that, like I said, since we don't have to have snow cover present, we can see it expressed in the spring of the year. Kyle, when should a superintendent or a turf manager start thinking about these various types of snow mold? So if, if I was a superintendent, I'm thinking the middle of the summer, I want to get my program in place. I want to know exactly, uh, you know, what uh, fungicides I'm going to be using uh, because probably uh, sometime in October and November is when these applications need to be made. Uh, so like I said, you just need to be prepared. You need to have your products in place. And, uh, you know, have, have sort of a target date because, Guy, what we're trying to do is ideally uh, up in the northern U.S. where we get snow cover, we're trying to time this to about two weeks before we get that permanent snow cover. So the superintendent needs to be thinking about that, you know, depending on what the environmental conditions are in the fall of the year, the weather patterns are, et cetera. So it, do, it does take a little bit of... Uh, thinking about, hey, where do I want to be with this application and the timing of that application? Kyle, why should a superintendent be concerned about snow mold and what type of damage can it cause? Well, they should be concerned because it can cause some extensive damage in the spring of the year, absolutely. And if you, you know, fail to treat some areas that uh, you should have treated, your turf's going to take uh, a fair amount of time to recover the next spring. And, you know, you, you just don't want that for your golfers. You want an, uh, a, a good uniform playing surface in the spring when you come out of winter. Um, yeah, it's okay to have a little bit of a, 
uh, disease pressure early on, but you know we, we don't want it to be too extensive. So you need to make sure you're treating those areas that maybe historically you've had snow mold in or that you would expect it in uh, so that you don't run into that in the spring. Do pink and gray snow mold uh, inflict the same amount of damage on turf or is one more damaging than the other? I would say as a rule, the uh, gray snow mold is a little bit more severe. Uh, that requires snow cover, as we talked about. So it's just sort of sitting under the snow, and that inoculum is infecting that turf grass and can do a, a fair amount of damage. Whereas with pink snow mold, I feel like if you get it, uh, you can recover more quickly from it. We have plenty of fungicides that we can use in the spring of the year to uh, help it along. So I would say, generally speaking, the gray snow mold, the speckled snow mold are the ones that are going to give you the most damage. Kyle, when would the uh, damage start appearing and what should a superintendent be looking for? Well, as soon as the, the snow cover melts off, you know, that's when you're going to determine, wow, you know, were, were my fungicides very effective or were they not? And so it's going to basically be in the spring of the year, probably around April sometimes, you know, in a lot of locations. And you're going to be able to determine, you know, were my fungicides effective or not. Um, and then you, if you've got a lot of damage, you sort of need to go to plan B. We're going to get the fungicides and spray programs here in a minute. But what can be done culturally entering winter to limit or even prevent snow mold damage? Probably not a whole lot of things. Probably, though, the most important is we don't want to go into the, the uh, winter months with a lot of lush growth, Guy, because you can imagine that can be easily infected by these snow mold pathogens. So uh, we need to make, make sure that our fertility is fairly moderated going into the winter months uh, because, like I said, lush growth and then getting snow over top of that, uh, over top of that can you can have a lot of damage. So everything that you can do to help harden that plan off uh, would really help out. Before we get back to our conversation with Kyle, another quick message from BSF. Pillar G Intrinsic brand fungicide combines the powers of two highly effective ingredients to provide rapid protection during stressful periods, allowing it to control more diseases than competing granular fungicides. With proven plant health benefits like increased root length and density, this innovative solution can help keep your turf grass looking and performing its best. Talk to your BSF sales rep or visit betterturf.bsf.us to learn more. Now back to our conversation with Kyle. Okay, now on to spray programs. What should a superintendent consider when creating and timing a spray program for snow mold control, Kyle? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you, you know, you want that snow mold application, uh, I'd say a week or two before that permanent snow cover. In places where you've got severe pressure, a lot of superintendents will make two applications, guys. So the first one might be 45 days out from snow cover, and then that next one is 30 days later, so maybe two weeks out from permanent snow cover. Um, you know, th those are targeted at greens, you know, high maintenance surfaces, whereas fairways, you're probably just going to do one application uh, because it needs to be a lot more affordable. Uh, but like I said, in places where you've got severe pressure, uh, two applications is probably the way to go. Well, you're good at stealing my questions this podcast, Kyle, because yeah, my next one was going to be what provides better control, one application in late fall or two applications based 30 days apart? Well, the answer to that is the two applications, but then it comes back to economics, Guy. And, you know, can you really afford to do that in a lot of places on the golf course? Um, so I think, you know, it, it, it's tied to that. What you're doing is you're basically, when you're making that application uh, in the fall of the year or, or almost, you know, to the winter months, you're trying to really impact that little bit of inoculum that's getting going. So you're trying to suppress that. You're trying to stop that so that in the spring of the year, you don't have any symptoms, um, you know, emerging, if you will. So what we're trying to do with these applications is stop that inoculum at the time of treatment. So if we go out way too early, then some of that uh, fungicide may degrade before, you know, that snow cover hits and we might be a little less effective. So what we're trying to do is 
target just before we get that snow cover because once that uh, fungicide's under that snow cover, it's, quote, protected and will give you a little bit longer residual. Is there a situation where another application could or should be made during winter, in mid to late winter? Yeah, that's always a question that, that I've had, and I've, I've asked the experts about that. And the, and, and the predominant answer is no. Uh, here's what happens is if you have a lot of snow cover, obviously you can't make an application during the middle of the winter because the product's not going to get to the ground. However, if you have a warm winter, you know, with a fair amount of rainfall, here's what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot less snow mold pressure in that situation. So the need for that uh, a, a, an application during the middle of the uh, season, probably not needed. So generally speaking, guy, you're not going to ever really need to make an application, let's say in January or February, because you don't have snow cover. What causes snow mold products to not provide adequate residual? Well, cold weather uh, allows them to uh, lengthen the residual. So if you have warm temperatures during the winter, if you have a lot of moisture, if you have a lot of rain, that can degrade those fungicides and cause them to last a shorter amount of time. Kyle, what snow mold fungicides have proven effective in helping superintendents and their teams combat snow mold? I tell you what, Guy, when you look at all the products that we use for snow mold control, there are many, many different classes of chemistry where we extract products from. Uh, most of the time, we are using two, three, four active ingredients that might be a, a strobal urine or a QOI, a DMI, uh, chlorothalonil, for example, or iperdion or PCNB. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, chemical classes that are used to get good, strong snow mold control all season long. So uh, I, I just wouldn't say there's one guy. There are just so many, and there are a lot of uh products out there that use multiple uh, active ingredients to give season-long snow mold control. At what point in the spring does a superintendent know he or she has avoided problems caused by snow mold? Is there a certain moment or a certain thing they need to see where they realize that they're in the clear? Yeah, so basically when that snow melts off, um, for example, my researchers that do a lot of this snow mold work, you know, they're waiting for that snow to clear to determine how much uh, snow mold pressure they had on their plots. And as soon as uh, that snow melts, they can tell very quickly. Um, so yeah, once, once the snow comes off, uh, you're gonna be able to tell how well your fungicides held up. What resources does BASF have available and offer for anybody who wants to learn more about snow mold and snow mold control? On our website, betterturf.basf.us, uh, we've got uh, some, some uh, cell sheets and some spray information on spray programs that uh, folks can use to, to determine, you know, what products seem to perform well. We've got data to uh, go along with uh, some of these spray programs. So, yeah, just simply go to our website and take a look at uh, some of the products that are there. Well, Kyle, sadly, this is the last disease discussion of 2021, so I believe you're a repeat guest and we appreciate the time and these have been fun to do and you know thanks for everything that you and the BASF team do to help so many people in the industry. Well we, we have, we've had a good time doing these and I guess uh, as the, the year comes to a close you know snow mold is the last thing on everybody's mind especially in the northern U.S. so uh, let's put that turf to bed uh, in great shape so that uh, the golfers in the spring of the year have a uh, nice surface to play on. So, yeah, enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for having me.